Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Communicating in Style with Style, one of my very favorite topics today. I can't wait to share all this great information with you. Come on in, say hello. We've got Ohio, Oregon, North Carolina, California. Yes, let us know where you're chiming in from. I'm so happy to see all of you today. As I said, this is one of my favorite topics. I can't wait to dig into it with you. But first of all, a couple things. I'm Joan Burge. I'm the founder and CEO of Office Dynamics International. And we are the global leader in development and training for administrative professionals. And we've been doing it for 33 years. And I'm sorry, I just really have to brag for a minute because I'm super excited after 32 years. I received a Lifetime Achievement Award for my work in the industry from Admin Awards. So I'm super excited and I just had to share that with you. Uh, I'm really, really proud of the work that I have done on behalf of administrative professionals and pioneering the training industry for administrative professionals. So yes, thank you all very much. And actually in April, I'm going to have the founder and CEO, Sunny Newman of Admin Awards, doing a joint webinar with me to kick off administrative professionals week early, a whole week early. So I'll tell you more about that later today. Thank you so much. Um, as most of you know, our educational part of the program is about 40 to 45 minutes, and then we'll have Q&A. Thank you for all the congratulations. I really appreciate those very much. Uh, anyway, you can submit your questions throughout the webinar and then Malia will gather all of those up and I'll answer as many as I can. Remember, you're gonna have a replay of today, which I think you're definitely going to want because I'm gonna cover a lot of territory with you and you're probably going to wanna reference that later. I do want to thank our sponsor today, Easy Cater. Yes, they are sponsoring us again, and I'm so happy about that. And with Easy Cater, you can order from over 100,000 restaurants uh, nationwide. Whew, that's a lot. <laughs> and they can accommodate any size group, any dietary needs, and they said they will be on time. So that's great news. So thank you to Easy Cater. Uh, let's see what else. Okay, I really hope you can stay tuned um, and be with me until at least right before Q&A. Obviously, I want you to stay until the end. But um, right before Q&A, I have a secret announcement that I'm going to make. You'll be the first ones to hear it. So that's pretty cool, right? And also today throughout our webinar, we're going to give away my books. I have five different books today that I can't wait to give away. In fact, we're gonna start with that in just a moment. So if you don't win a book, also for the rest of you, we're going to offer a 20% discount on my books and the code is book. 20. So let's kick it off with some giveaways. I love to give things away. So the first one, um, the first book I want to give away is Become an Inner Circle Assistant, How to Be a Star in the Profession. This actually was my first really big meaty book I wrote for assistants, and we've, we've had tens of thousands of them, um, you know, passed out or, or purchased throughout the world. Uh, but what's exciting about this is we just released the second edition. So it was all updated last year, and that was new the end of last year. All right, Malia, who's our winner? That book is going to Robin Got Better. All right, Robin, congratulations. And Malia, I can actually hear you very well today. Hey. And then I want to give away the next book, which actually followed that book. And it's called Underneath It All, uh, How Top Tier Executive Assistants Create a Competitive Advantage. Again, this is also a second edition. I updated this book last year and we released it the end of last year. 
So who's our lucky winner? Lucky winner is Tony Perrier. All right, thank you. Congratulations, yay. We have three more for later, so you may win one. All right, let's dig in. I absolutely love the topic of communications. First of all, all facets of it. I find it very interesting because it really makes or breaks us in so many ways. Relationships, our work, our ability to persuade and so forth. This particular topic though, where we're gonna learn about styles and preferences. I've been teaching since 1990. We teach it in our Star Achievement Series course and our World Class Assistant course, both of those are designation courses. But I've also taught it as a standalone workshop numerous times, and everyone is always fascinated by it. I know for me personally, when I learned about this years ago, it helped me tremendously. Really, in understanding myself, I do have some dominant preferences when it comes to communications, which means I have to do a little more stretching than other people. But understanding myself, I know when to leverage that. I know when to stretch. I understood why there, I was feeling conflict with certain people. Um, and it was really around maybe their style was completely opposite of my style. It's helped me build better relationships. It's helped me be more persuasive with people. The list goes on and on and on. So I'd like you to think a moment about when we communicate. Hey, just think about it. You know, what, what's the goal of communication? But really, when we communicate, we're trying to either convey a feeling, right? Declare yourself about something. Persuade someone. That's really important in your role. We want to enlighten others to new ideas. Or maybe we want to impart a philosophy. I know I like to do that a lot. Or maybe a process upon others. Express your ideas. Inform coworkers. Sometimes it's just we need to inform people, right? Sometimes we need to confirm something. Sometimes we need to send data to people. And relate to your customers' requests, whether those are internal customers or external customers. So star assistants, you know, really want to effectively communicate. And, and let me go back to this question of what is the goal of communication? I mean, I listed a, a, a list, right? I gave you a lot of ideas, but really overall big picture, what's that goal? What do you think? The goal is to impact others and get them to listen to us, or we want them to be able to positively react to our request or our response in the workplace. Well, if you want that to happen, you really have to understand styles and you have to know how to kind of tap into someone else's style. You need to know when to utilize your style or when to back off because you're coming on too strong. And so those are the different things that we're going to learn today. So I'm going to take this a piece at a time. Um, again, if you have questions, I'm going to answer, you know, questions later, but I'm going to walk through this and Hopefully everyone, uh, it'll make sense to you. And I'm going to share with you my style. I'm going to teach you how to read your numbers on the assessment. I hope you all completed the assessment. That's important. Um, if you didn't get to that assessment, don't worry, because you could still chime in and listen to the part about the characteristics of each color and how we will use this information. Um, as we move forward. All right. So first step, we sent all registrants this assessment. Either yesterday it went out and maybe this morning again. So first of all, hopefully you all got that and you printed that assessment. 
and you could follow the directions. So what you were supposed to do on this, and, and some of you might have struggled when you looked at it, you might have said, uh, for number one, it says outgoing and sociable, or are you strong and forceful? Oh, it's okay if yours looks different than mine. Don't worry about that. You probably got a nicer looking one. <laughs> and you might have said, well, I'm both. I'm A and I'm B. But the idea was you had to choose one. This is called a forced choice assessment. We're forcing you to choose one over the other. Um, and that's okay because you were asked, there's 32 points on here. You were asked similar things, but in different ways. So it all pans out. Uh, again, I've used this assessment on thousands of people and it's 97% accurate. So that's pretty good. So let's go through this again. Everyone has this. There were times where I was on one of each side and that's okay, it was tough. Um, so the idea is if you were, if it was tough, that probably means you don't have a strong preference. Um, and give me your results, okay, great. So I'm gonna explain what the numbers mean because that's what's important. And if you're saying, well, I'm not really a red or I'm not this, I'm gonna tell you why. It means you probably don't have that as a strong preference. People who do display these characteristics. Excuse we've got me, green no. and blues, we've got reds, 987, 9887. So I'll tell you what those numbers mean. Joan, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I have a few people chiming in that they need you to explain how to do the bottom part. Okay, that's fine. Yes, I can do that. Thank so you. So if you, let's go through this. So you had a circle A or B, correct? Under, it didn't matter what color. It was first A or B. Then what you're going to do is you're going to total the number of circles under each color. That's how you'll get your numbers. So down here where we have total, maybe you have six circles under red and five circles under yellow. Maybe you only have one green circle. That's okay. This is where you're all going to be different. And that's why I wanted you to take this assessment because you're not all the same. Your numbers matter. And I'm glad you're sharing your numbers. And like I said, I'll do that. So the next step here, let me show you mine. Cause here's what you're gonna look at. Cause we're gonna talk about numbers in a minute and hopefully this won't mess me up. Um, I'm gonna share mine with you right now. Okay, so how you determine your predominant style it's the color with the highest number. You can see mine's a 12. You might have a tie. Your backup color is the next highest number. So mine was green. I had 10 circles under my green. Then we're going to go to the next number. Now, again, you could have ties. I saw some of you had three sevens. So you actually have three backup colors. And I'll tell you what that means shortly. Then for me, my numbers uh, blue, I had six circles. And my yellow is the least. I have four circles. All right, so I can't see the chat right now because I'm focused on this. Uh, so stay with me. You don't want to get distracted right now and don't jump around to reading the characteristics and what your color means because this part I'm going to talk about is really critical. You could have the same num order of me, the same colors in my order, and be very different 
because of your numbers. So what do the numbers mean? Well, first of all, you want to look at what's your highest number, mine's 12, to your next. I have a 10, so I'm only a two-point difference. That isn't very much. What that means is while I favor red, green, my green characteristics are very close behind, and so I don't have to stretch to move into green. I kind of go to that after my red. And then if you look at here, I have a four point difference. So that's a little more than here. So you're gonna look at your the differences, okay? The closer your numbers are, the more easily you move in to the other color characteristics. The farther apart, the more stretching you're going to have to do. Then what I want you to do, and Malia, let me know, hopefully everybody's still with me because I can't see the chat. My red is a 12, so take your highest number, subtract your lowest. So mine would be a 12 minus a four is an eight point difference. So obviously I do more stretching to communicate with strong yellows than I do with a green or blue. And this is where my understanding comes in. When I need to back off, when I need to accommodate that color to be effective with that individual. So I'm gonna stop sharing mine. I wanna see, hopefully everyone understood the numbers. Okay, now I'm trying to come back to you, Malia. There we go. All right. So like we we'll look at somebody has a blue, 12 blue, nine red, your green's a seven, your yellow's a four. So you're a 12 to a four like I am. What if somebody had like a, a, a one, if your lowest number was a one and your highest number is a 14? I've seen that you have big stretches to do. So this is why your numbers are important. Kimberly has a 10, eight, seven, and seven. So Kimberly, you're not gonna do a lot of stretching to go from your blue to your green, to your red, to your yellow. So obviously when you're communicating with individuals who are dominant in those colors, it's easier for you to move in and out. Does anyone have a big, discrepancy in your numbers anyone like your top being really high uh wendy has a 14 red and a blue you're five so you're nine point difference so that's a little more stretching and we'll find out as we study the characteristics also why certain styles or, or communication styles have to do bigger stretches even because the characteristics are opposite. So I want to make sure everyone's with me before I move on. Now, a couple things with your numbers. When we start reading about and studying characteristics, if you, if I'm reading about the red and you say, oh, that's not me, that's not me, go look at your numbers. If your numbers are close, no, it's not you. <laughs> you're bringing in the characteristics from the other colors. So I hope that makes sense. And after I go through characteristics, we could go back and you could ask questions with your numbers and what does that all mean and so forth. So before we actually go deep into the characteristics, a couple things. I want to remind you we're talking about communication styles not personality because red and greens we're going to see uh they say they're uninterested in personal feelings well i'm a strong red and green's my backup but i do have personal feelings and i am interested in people and i do get emotional what it is saying and when i'm communicating basically just get to the business I don't need all the fluff and I don't need all the other stuff. Okay, so if you wanna be effective with me, um, 
that's, you know, really you've got to think about that. And then I'll, I'll kind of lead into that personal. But I also know if I'm communicating with a very strong yellow, they're going to want to have the social conversation. And so if I want to have that rapport and I'm trying to work with that individual or they're a client of mine, I'm going to do that. I'm going to have the personal conversation. So again, keep in mind this has to do with communications. Secondly, as we go through the characteristics, I want you to think about yourself, of course, but I also want you to think about your leader, the person or people you support the most. Do you see them coming out of any of these styles? And you may say, no, I don't recognize it. That's okay because they have what we call balance. So going back to our numbers a moment, we talk about a balanced profile and a focus profile. One is not better than the other. Balance all it means is your numbers are close together. So the good news for you, you could jump in and out of any style easily. Your challenge is if you had to communicate in any one style, for any length of time, it's gonna be very hard because you pull in the others. Let's look at the other side. If someone has a focused profile, that means we have a dominant preference like me. The good news for us is we could talk in that style for hours. Our stretch, our challenge is when we're communicating with someone who's really different in their style, we've got to do more stretching, okay? So as we go through characteristics, think about your leaders. Think about other people you work with on a daily basis. Do you see them coming out in any of these styles? Because that will be important as you move forward in your relationships with them. All right, so I hope I made sense so far. So what we're going to do next is I'm going to review the characteristics, but I'm not going to read everything on this sheet. So hopefully everyone has this. And if you don't, don't worry, you could take notes. I'm going to explain this to you. So first of all, let's start out. We're going to start with the red characteristics. That was the first off topic love the lipstick the red right goes with my color so under our reds here are the important things for you to remember when you're communicating with the red so we're going to look under first we've got characteristics so the second line down where it says short-term objectives they want to know the short-term objective of a project Really important under characteristics, it's in the middle part of that paragraph. Reds don't like indecision and vagueness. So if you're going to talk to that red, don't be wishy-washy. Know what you want. We don't like wishy-washy, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so be decisive. Um, and, that, and it's part of that we, we also take charge. Reds are quick to act. So what does that mean with communications? If reds are quick to act, how does that tie into communications? Yes, just tell them what you want. Get to the point. Don't take up a lot of their time. Yeah, preach, don't. I'm preaching. Sorry, red's my color. Um, so under how to communicate with red, here's the here are the important things to remember. Highlight the third sentence. If you disagree with a red, argue facts, not feelings. And I'll tell you why. Because reds incorporate the left side of the brain, their characteristics. And the left side of the brain is where we do our logical thinking. The right side of the brain is feelings and intuition. So that's why I'm telling you with, with the red, and you're also gonna see with green, same thing. 
Green is the left, is going to be part of the left brain. And so you've got to be logical if you're going to explain something or disagree with them. Let's also look under red, under how to communicate. So I'm referring to my sheet again, but you can write this down. Be short and to the point. So we love bullet points. If you're sending us an email, bullet point it, you know. Now, obviously, there are times you've got to explain things, um, but don't over if you don't need to. And then also with our reds, be precise, be efficient. So that all ties together, right? How many of you, if you were a strong red, say, go red in the chat? If you had a, a dominant red, we're going to get to our, our yellows next. So let's go on to our yellows because they're pretty opposite. Um, and I see we've got some questions going too. So, and I have somebody wants to speak. Is that gonna work? Allison Richards? I don't know, I'm gonna try this because we've been wanting to try this and I don't know if it's gonna work. Okay, she may come up. With our yellows, look under the characteristics. Yellows. Yeah, go red, go red. <laughs> um, yellow, empathetic, personal, intuitive, under the characteristics. They emphasize human relations, okay? They enjoy friendly, informal conversation. Really, our red's over here, yellow's over here, right? Yay, yellow, yes. Also under our yellow for the characteristics, it's the last line. It says, yellows dislike telling people unpleasant things. They seek harmony. So yellows, if you're a strong yellow, maybe you find you do have a hard time delivering bad news to people. So if that's the case, go find a red, they'll have no problem, okay? <laughs> um, all right, no, yellows, it's great. So how do we communicate with a yellow? If you look under that, don't hurry the discussion. So it's different. And that's why when I'm building rapport and, and being caring of the yellows out there, I'm not going to hurry, not all the time. Sometimes I have to because I need work to move along. Other times, though, I'm going to take that time to listen and have conversation with my strong yellows. Also, with yellows, you want to be uh, personable. You know, that it's that friendly, casual conversation. Now, one thing yellows have to watch. So first of all, let me go back to reds. Reds, we also have to watch because we're quick to the point, you know, just get to it. We could also come across as being abrasive to people who don't know us well. So we have to learn to back off sometimes um, and not be too strong, basically. Yellows, your challenge is, if you're a strong yellow, you stray from the subject because you like to just be casual and you're not real time oriented maybe and you kind of go off on these tangents. So you got to pull yourself back in if you don't have somebody to do that for you. Now, if you're talking with another strong yellow, you're having a ball. So that's okay. All right. If you're a yellow, strong yellow, chat, go yellow. Type in the chat, go yellow. Woohoo! We need our yellows. Now, if you're a mix, this is a good one. Yellow and red mix. Mm, how does that work? Because you're opposite. It means you're going to go back and forth. You're going to be the yellow and, and be personable and have those conversations. And then you're going to jump over to the red where you want it done. And you're going to be more precise. So you kind of go back and forth. Um, and that's okay because you're going to, your yellow will also complement some of the strong of the red. All right, on to our blues. Where are our blues? 
So important things to remember as far as their characteristics. There are introspective, conceptual people. So what does that mean? It means they like abstract information. Strong blues, their brain will connect the dots. An idea here, an idea here, boom, their brain connects. What that means to you is don't go into every little step of the way. You'll lose them. So uh, their brain, they can take small pieces of information and form a whole. It's just the way their brain operates. They're also very good listeners. So how do we communicate with the blue? Let's look at your sheet if you have your characteristic sheet. You want to be very supportive of their feelings. So they're like yellows. They're about feelings. They like informal, casual conversation. Um, they really don't like it when you dictate to them. You're not going to get anywhere dictating to a blue. Paula, oh, good. You're a go blue and red your backup. Paula, that's why we get along so well, because our reds. <laughs> Plus, we just like each other. We're good friends. <laughs> All right. Let's, oh, if you're a blue, type in the chat. Go blue. Woohoo. Gosh, I should have had my little color signs that I use in my live workshops. <laughs> Sue Velarde, what are you? Where's Sue? I bet you're yellow, strong yellow. <laughs> All righty, and let's do our last category, our characteristics for our green. The characteristics are just like the green. If you look at the um, descriptors of the greens, they are precise. They're analytical. They tend to be impersonal. They like rules. They like regulations. Who does this sound like in an organization? Even though this isn't a career assessment, engineers, scientists, financial people, right? <laughs> human resources. This is my daughter. She's a strong, she's in human resources. She wants guidelines, structure, procedures, rules, details, evidence. It has to be logical, okay? So if we're going to uh, be able to work effectively with strong greens, you know, where are you? Are you similar in characteristics with the green or not? Are you on the other end of the spectrum? And we're, we're going to keep going into this deeper and deeper. So just bear with me if you would. Um, so let's look at uh, with the greens something very important it says under green how to communicate it's in the middle paragraph you have to give green time to make a decision give green time so if your way if you have a strong green you're supporting don't rush them for a decision about something they're going to need time to analyze it to think about it Okay, so if you're a green, type in the chat, go green. It's so great. We have a really nice mixture in our, our webinar group today. So I'm going to pause for 10 seconds because I'm going to go and show you another dimension. Go greens. Thank you. Oh, uh, good point the green can tend to overanalyze. So really, you know, what we want to do with these, um, aside from another list I'm going to give you, is look at if you have some dominant characteristics, when does that work well for you and when it doesn't? Like the green, you know, they, they can, if you're a strong green, you could overanalyze to the point where you're not making a decision. You're not decisive. Reds, on the other hand, we're so quick to act. We make decisions like that, but then maybe later 
a week down the road or two days down the road, we say, well, no, we change our minds. I've done that. Okay. So you really, I want you to study this. I really want you to look at this on your own quiet time and absorb this because this is powerful, so powerful. And it will help you tremendously in your personal life and in your professional. All right, so the next thing I wanted to share with you when we look at our colors, right, the four, red and green are most similar. So let's have a little quiz. How do you think red and green are similar? Let's see if you remember, if you were paying attention to what I've been saying. How are red and green similar? Logic. They share that left brain thinking, so they both like uh, logical communications. When you're communicating with them, they want you to be logical about things. Now, what's the difference between red and green. Does anyone know there's a big difference between a red and a green? Anyone guess? I know you're still doing the other. Time, yeah. So red, remember, quick, decisive, that's really important when you're communicating with the red, you know, they value their time. Green, we're not going to rush in our communications or rush for a decision, okay? That's really important to remember. Okay, here's another quiz question for you. Yellow and blues are similar. They share a few characteristics. What are the similarities between a yellow and a blue? Can anyone guess? Ooh, Bethany, that's good insight about the red and green. Okay, the social, yes, the yellows and blues, casual, social, speak to feelings with them oh you all did really good yay you're listening to that can you all get stars <laughs> very very good um can you do you notice any difference between a yellow and a blue it's a little hard to tell so i'm gonna tell you yellows are gonna want um a little more of the pieces of the puzzle and blue doesn't need a lot of the pieces remember okay so when we're communicating with them that's where they're going to match let me see how i am on time so we better move on anyway the characteristics we're going to have more fun with this this keep this and study this and the more I, I promise, the more you work with this, the more you pay attention to other people, the more value this is going to have for you. And, and we could talk, you know, a lot of different examples here, but let's move on to the next piece. So now you have this information. What are you supposed to do with this? Okay. So I have five points for you. Are you ready? And then we can, we'll take questions. Um, oh, sorry. One more thing before we go to what to do with these. Because you've been so great in providing answers and participating, Malia, let's give away three books. Who took my pen again? One of our collaborative books, 249 assistants contributed their ideas to this book. And we have three authors on it. This is going to Sandy Schaefer. Yay, congratulations, Sandy. I love this book. Yay. All right, uh, the next book was after that, was Joan's Greatest Administrative Secrets Revealed. Who's our winner? Winner is Stephanie Fleischman. All right, congratulations. Ooh, red, see, I'm short to the point. Let's go, let's move, <laughs> let's go on to the next thing. 
Uh, our most recent book, this is for executives, the executive's competitive edge, why you need an assistant and how to leverage them. Who's this our winner? The winner is Donnie, I'm sorry, Donna Gelkin. Yay, congratulations. All right, good, good. Okay, now let's go on. What are we going to do with all this great information? So first of all, use this information to complement, and that's with an E, spelled with an E, complement your executive's preferred style. So you are welcome to get that, print another assessment out, a blank one, and have your executive complete it. So the idea being, um, if your executive is dominant in one area and you're dominant, let's say we have a green executive, dominant green, right? They're not going to be real personable. They want to just, you know, be matter of fact. And they have a yellow assistant, a strong yellow, right? Who has the feelings and the sensitivities. So you can compliment, meaning let's say they have a, a message to deliver, an email to get out and they're just real factual and kind of cold and I'm feeling, you could add a little warmth to that email, okay? Um, or if they have to deliver bad news, you could help soften the blow on that news, correct? So that's what I mean by compliment. And actually, this just came in last night. And I'm going to give you an, a specific example how an assistant applied this information. So this is from our Star Achievement Series. To achieve the SEEP designation, participants have to do an essay. And so here was the question. You learned the four communication styles. Name one way you have applied your understanding of styles to improve communications with your coworkers. So she spoke specifically about her executives. So this is what I mean. I have taken the time to analyze my Co-workers, uh, meaning her bosses. My communication style is red. That's the assistant. I have one red executive who's a male and one that is a blue-green split female. They are very different personalities and I've always had a stronger relationship with my red executive. I've been showing more of an interest in my blue-green executive as a person and also giving her longer deadlines before I need an answer, remember greens need more time, on travel arrangements, projects, meeting agendas, and being empathetic to her need to be cautious and know all the details. I am pleased to report that our working relationship has noticeably improved to the point where she offers me some insider information. I'm feeling much more part of her circle and generally of added value to her. So that's what I mean. That's what you want to do. All right. What's the second thing we could do with this information? Build rapport with our internal customers and peers and external. Building rapport. And, and the part of that is you accommodating other styles. It's not really so much about us. If we want to be effective, we want to pay attention if someone has a preferred style. Not everyone does. So let's say I have two clients. One's a strong red, one's a strong yellow. With my red, when we're on a Zoom, we're quick to the point. We get it done. We talk about what we have to. I mean, we'll say, hi, how are you? Everything's great, you know. Um, but with my yellow, I've had some excellent relationships. With our yellows, I might spend the first five, seven minutes talking to them about their family and their mother's 50th anniversary party and their kids' games. And then we go into business. Do you see? That, that shows I really care about other people. When we adapt, because we want to be effective with them, we want to have that rapport with them, or we want to make things happen with that person. We're going to step out if you have a dominant style. Number three, you want to tailor your messages so that they're best received. 
So when you're sending emails, when you're in a meeting, you know, maybe a virtual meeting um, with other people, uh, but especially if you're sending emails. So now I want to explain something important. Style is not about if someone prefers text over email. That's not at all what I'm talking about. Okay. So when I ask people, well, what's somebody's communication style? Oh, well, they love to get emails. No, 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 no. We're talking about the characteristics. So when I email someone, again, if I know they're that more casual, fun, form, informal person, they need, you know, to, to relate to their feelings, I'm going to start out with hi or happy Monday. I hope your week is off to a great start, you know, and, and then, you know, maybe say a few other little things. So what was point two? Point two build rapport with internal and external customers. Number one was complement your executives uh, or leader style, C-O-M-P-L-E-M-E-N-T. So the tailoring our messages, you know, um, again, you're going to, again, communicate a little differently with your red or your green or your blue or your yellow. Number four, I'm going to keep moving because I know we got to get to questions, is be persuasive. Oh my gosh, this is so important. If you wonder sometimes why you can't persuade other people or your one of your managers, you may, if they have a strong style, you may not be persuading in the right way. For instance, strong blues, they like abstract, they love visuals. So when you want to convince them or persuade them of something, you want to show visuals as you communicate. Greens are going to want a lot of detail, you know, facts, figures. If they're investing in training or sending you to our conference, what's the ROI? Give me all the details. Give me the objectives, you know, and so forth. Yellows are going to be interested in, you know, the more Maybe the, the benefits of the networking when you go to an event and the different people you're going to get to network with. Okay, so again, if that's how you develop being persuasive. Now, obviously, if you have a group of people, you want to tap into all four, a little bit of each, because you don't know if they have any preferences. So I hope that makes sense. And then the fifth, what we want to do with this is to increase our level of emotional intelligence. So the second dimension of emotional intelligence, there's four, the second is about, I try to know you. Or no, I'm sorry, it's the third dimension. I apologize. Second dimension is manage me. Third dimension is I try to know you. So this ties into that because if, if I'm interacting with you, you know, pretty much on a regular basis, especially maybe not a one-time interaction, I'm going to pay attention. Do you have, does this person really, how do they talk? Are they talking about feelings or are they talking about facts? Are they quick and to the point or are they going on and on? And it may be no, none of that. Because remember earlier, go back to your numbers. Some of you, your numbers were very close. Okay. Uh, number five was you use this information to increase your level of emotional intelligence. Also apply this information to your personal life. This is not only at work. If we have preferred styles, we don't shut it off at home. We are who we are. So, you know, you can use this here. I use this with, you know, you could use this with your spouse or your partner. You know, if they have a strong preference, do you butt heads sometimes? Do you find you're disagreeing or you get upset with each other? You could be at the opposite ends. 
It doesn't mean you need a divorce, maybe, but it means you understand each other's communication styles. If you have adult children, um, service providers, you know, when you're interacting with any service providers on a regular basis, uh, I think of things when you're going to get a loan for a house or a car. You probably need a lot of green with you, facts and figures and be logical. If we get all emotional, oh my God, that car's so beautiful. I want it, I want it, I want it. Well, I do like get that way, but then I've got to get down to my green. Is it practical? Is it affordable? What are the numbers? What, you know, all those little things. We could use it with our neighbors, people again, who you interact with regularly. Do you see, do they have any strong preferences? Because for example, if you have a couple who travel with regularly and they're a lot of blue yellow, they're not, they don't need a big timeline for five days. What are you doing? When are you doing it? What time are you doing it? Oh, we got to stay on that schedule and move, 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 move. Do you see this has broad application? So, uh, and I know there's so much more I could cover with you on this, but um, the one thing I wanted to, to tell you uh, really quick too, is we typically don't change. People think, well, I'm a chameleon in this situation, I'm this in this situation. Maybe that's true. But if you have a foundation of um, a core color, like I, no matter how hard I try, I'm not going to be a dominant yellow. You know, I'm not. It's just not how my brain has developed over all these years. So, um, all right, stay with me. We're gonna go to Q&A, but really, really quick, I've gotta tell you this big secret um, that I'm so excited about. You're the first to know about it. We're not going to announce it to the public until April 10th. But I'm so thrilled that we have an amazing calendar of events for you for in honor of Administrative Professionals Week. But we're going to start early. I just put together an entire calendar of fun events. I can't tell you all what they are, but I'm super excited. And we're going to have um, some amazing webinars with guests, but we're going to have some different contests. We're going to give away prizes. So watch your inbox around april 10th we're going to release that announcement and also the calendar of events um, and we have a very cool theme for you as well all right that's my secret um let's go to q a malia and then we'll wrap up with just a couple announcements so questions Hi. Hi. <laughs> I know. There's, there's a lot. A 90 minute webinar. I know. You know, I love this topic. Okay. I know you do. Okay. Um, there's so many questions, Joan. Um, Ari said that she took this test a while ago and she got blue, but today she got green. Is it normal to change colors? Um, I would look at how close your numbers were. Um, were they, you know, was there a big difference um, between them? That's what I would look at. And you might take it a third time just to, to see. Usually, again, if you, it also depends on the order of your numbers. If they're not real far apart, you could have that little shift. But the bigger the difference in numbers, the less likely you are to have a shift. Okay. Um, Julie wants to know, is it possible to be a red at work and then be completely opposite at home? Or at least at home, she's perceived to be completely opposite um, from what she hears from her husband. <laughs> <laughs> so I would... I would say what I know from all the research that you know they do on these types of assessments is um, typically, again, if it's pretty much embedded in us, we we don't change. Now, again, remember, like I was saying with the red, reds or greens about they could come across as not interested in personal feelings, but I'm very interested in those. 
like when I'm talking with my neighbors and they're sharing something or I want to know how they're feeling or doing. Um, but yet within that, my, my conversation is going to be more short and to the point. You know, maybe a 10 minute conversation instead of a 20 minute conversation. And again, I'd have to really look at the order of your numbers and how they fall to be more specific with you. Okay. Um, and this was interesting to me. You've probably seen it before, but I haven't. Um, Mary Ann has eight for every color. And um, Lisa said that she has 25% of each color as well. So what do you, what do, you do if you're a little of all of them? <laughs> That's good. I mean, you know, I think it's great because, again, it means you can move in and out easily. Now, the challenge is sometimes you you waffle, what we call waffle. You go back and forth on things because you don't have a preferred way of communicating. So, you know, again, that's where we look at how do my numbers and my characteristics work for me? When do they work for me? When is it not working? You know, when does it get in the way of being more impactful or successful or building better relationships? So this is something you're going to need to be more conscious of as you move forward and, and catch yourself. Like I said, I know sometimes if I'm in a huge rush and I feel stressed and time compressed, my red can really come out and and be really strong. And, you know, yeah, if I'm with another strong red, it's OK, but not if it's a yellow or a blue. Duh, that could not be too good. So I have to, again, remember, pull back, you know, slow down. Okay. Um, another one. Yes, uh, Robin wants to know, what if you're supporting someone who is red-blue and you're yellow-green and the leader doesn't reciprocate or adapt to the style of communication? Well, they may not. <laughs> I think, you know, that's the hard part. And especially if people aren't aware of this and they haven't been taught this, they're just doing their thing. You know, they are who they are. Now, even... If you gave them this assessment and sat and talked with them, they still may not change. You know, it's up to an individual to say, hey, I really want to get better, you know, in how I communicate and being effective in building my relationships. So really, again, finding out when do you need to adapt to your leader's style, especially if it's your leader, right? You know, you're going to have to do that adapting but you could also have that conversation now that you know this about your differences and how do you make some of that work to have an even better working relationship so um we only have two minutes left so i'm gonna uh stop there a minute malia because i just i have a sure, couple sure. of really important messages um again you could go to our website officedynamics.com i'm certain we have a lot of blogs about this. Um, I might even have a few webinars. I don't remember because I, I talk on this topic a lot. But a few other announcements really quick. If you could uh, wait two more minutes or one more minute, I'll go quick like a red. Again, thanks to our sponsor, EZ Cater. EZ Cater. I want to thank them very much. And then, so what's on the horizon for you? In April, we have two webinars. Um, one is Mark Your Calendar, April 19, with Sunny Newman. And she's going to talk about advocating for yourself. Again, Sunny's the CEO of the Admin Awards, where I got this award, and she knows all about how admins need to advocate for themselves. It's going to be our kickoff webinar, you know, for Administrative Professionals Week, but we're starting it a week early. Um, and so it's going to be amazing. On April 25, that's a Tuesday, I'm going to have a guest, Kayla Hutchins. She's on right now with us. Hello, Kayla. And Kayla has been advocating for herself for years, for, for many years, I should say, for professional development for herself and eventually getting approval for her administrative peers. 
So that's what she's going to talk about. And does she know the language and how to be persuasive and talk about ROIs and really push for your case to get support for development? Um, Enlighten is opened up for registration. That is our June mid-year event, live virtual, to really reignite you for the rest of the year and we have a phenomenal lineup if you haven't seen that go check it out we have two tracks a tech track and a power track a uh, 30-year conference in person is alive and well we hit our hundred uh, number already and it's not until the end of october so people are really excited about our theme this year and the celebration and all our speakers and another announcement new we've got our dates now announced for our next round of world-class assistant it's going to start let's see orientation starts june 27th those dates will be up on our website i think by the end of today so if you want to get your certification and julie reed is going to be teaching that round she's uh, an amazing trainer one of our elite trainers and last, just a reminder that you have the 20% discount on our books and the code is book 20. Okay, I know I'm one minute over. Um, I hope everyone really, really got a lot of value out of today's webinar. And thank you so much for attending. And remember to communicate in style with style. Bye, everyone.